This is The Traveling Golfer. My name is Mike, and right there, Claudio DeMarchi, The Traveling Golfer. How are you, buddy? I am good. Great to be back. Yes, thanks for coming in. And uh, as always, we have an amazing show lined up for you today. Uh, discussion about where you can travel for golf. And of course, in a uh, COVID time, this is research for you. But uh, quite often, depending on where you're listening, you'll find that there are some amazing places you can golf right now. And we're uncovering them for you here. Go to TravelingGolfer.net for an amazing lineup of great content that revolves around golf and travel. And uh, wherever you are listening to this show, please subscribe. Tell a friend about it and hit the notification button if you're listening on YouTube. And next time we have a show, it'll come up. So what's what's new, guy? You've covered all the bases this time. I didn't even have to help. No, I know. Sometimes I have to reach out. That was good. I know. I You know what? Maybe I'm just like right in the zone. Like you're an old pro at this. Do you think that maybe uh, I would have a good day of golf based on my precision with the intro to the show? We're going to make that happen. All right. Uh, you know what? We are. You, you know what? Snow's going to fly soon, so you're off the hook for a while, but then Isn't look that out. awesome? I made it happen. I, made <laughs> yeah. it, I got all the way through summer. Uh, now, uh, and we, where we're going, I saw that they had snow already. No kidding. Yeah. All right. Well, that's a good hint at our guest upcoming. Who are we meeting with today? Well, we are going back up to one of the greatest golf resorts in the world. And I'm not even like going to take a step back to that because it is one of the greatest in the world. It's up in northern Michigan. And this is not exactly the way I wanted to return there. I was hoping to actually be, be on there, the course, feet on the ground and duffing away. Soon enough, my friend. But, uh, later on in the show, we'll talk a little bit of wine spirits as we always do as we hit the wine cellar. Uh, because Claudio, he, uh, he goes through the very tedious process. And thank you so much on behalf of all of us of trying to find some great wines out there at great prices. And uh, sometimes there's even a stinker or two he likes to talk about. So stick around for that. No stinkers this time. But, all right. But I did go, you know, up, up the 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 dollar value again just because you want me to too. and so i thought i should i'm trying to class the show up a little bit i got lots of class most of it's third we're not plenty of it <laughs> we're not just golf hobos you know we are uh fancy men that's right so uh, let's go up to boyne let's do it northern michigan all right uh toronto to boyne over are you there uh yes mike claudio it's ken hey ken how are you man great to talk to you guys again Thanks, uh, thanks for coming back. Uh, is, is Claudio on the button? You guys are getting a bit of snowflake already there. The um, it's uh, we closed the courses down a couple weeks ago, and right as we were closing them down, we just had a little bit of a taste of it, and we're just we're continuing to wait for more to get the areas open up. Uh, last time we talked to you, we were all just kind of getting back onto the course, and uh, there was a bunch of uh, special accommodations that had to be made to, to make that happen. But golf, Claudio, was one of the first places that came back. Golf has had an incredible year on the course and even sales of golf equipment in both July and August set records like never before seen in history. What was your experience so. this summer? Uh, well, the 2020 season was one like no other, that's for sure. Um, you know, we spent a lot of spring because we weren't getting courses open. We spent a lot of springs doing a lot of spring doing a lot of planning. And, you know, we had plans for everything. So once things did start to come around, we actually ended up opening the course on May 1. Uh, typically, we opened three to five then. So we opened one, played for a couple of weeks, got the ability. That was walking only. Um, when we had the ability to ride in the cart, we opened five courses uh, to ride in the cart. And then a couple of weeks later in late May, um, we actually had the ability to ride two to a cart. So we had all 10 courses open up and you know, it was uh, business levels were off uh, in May and the first part of June. But boy, from the middle of June on, um, we've never been busier. And it was that way right until we closed the courses a few weeks ago. Wow. That's absolutely awesome. That is incredible. I mean, you do love a good story uh, of economic and social variety in a time like this. And, uh, you know, good, good on golf. Yep. Because golf has always been there. Absolutely. And, and one of the great things about Boyne staff, Ken and his team, is they're going to be on with the Traveling Golfer, both podcast and on the digital platform all year long. So our listeners will be able to read and hear more about what's going on at Boyne because everybody needs to go there. Watch me put Ken on the spot here. Maybe we'll even have a couple of special offers for our podcast listeners uh, to inspire them to to visit Boyne. 
Well, I, uh, I, I haven't, I haven't to told them yet, Ken. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, it sounds like something's in the works. Well, Ken and I were talking last week, and you know, we have other industry sponsors, golf industry sponsors that are coming on board, and yes. we are going to have lots of giveaways. And Ken and I talked about having one of our giveaways include a trip to Boyne. Get out of here. I'm not. I'm not leaving. I just not here. Get out of here. Go to Boyne. I hope <laughs> yeah. you win. Well, that, so, that would be a terrific idea. Well, with those trips, they're always great because what I always say is plan your trip anyway, and then whenever you win it, that becomes your second trip that year. Oh, good point. Yeah, you didn't bargain well, on it, so now you get a, an extra week of, or an extra golf experience. Yeah. Yeah. Wow, that's a great idea, guys. Okay, well. So, so Ken, how, how did the hotel side of things and all of the other amenities fare uh, staff? Were you able to keep most of the staff on for the year? And I'm sure they're all going to be tremendous assets as we move into whoever knows what 2021 may bring. Yeah. The, the biggest challenge was getting enough staff. And, and um, we did put limitations on our hotel capacities, uh, arbitrary limitations, uh, because we wanted to make sure that we did maintain the proper, proper social distancing, not only in the room, um, but also in the restaurants. You know, we expanded outdoor dining as most places did. Um, but the big thing was having enough staff to service the people that were on board. Um, so, you know, and we, where we saw, what we saw too was an increase in the amount of drive-in traffic. Um, we typically do a lot of, of golf guests from, you know, Florida, Arizona, California, Texas, uh, that fly in to see us. Um, and what we saw was a real increase in what I'll say is like eight hour drive, which certainly puts Toronto, I think Toronto is seven from Boyne Mountain. So it puts it you know, right in the wheelhouse for everybody in Southern Ontario and, 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 and Northern Ontario, you know, if we can get the borders reopened, that was probably our biggest disappointment was, was not having the borders. We all know why we did it. And it was the, the safer thing to do. Um, but at the same token, we sure want to see those reopen for next year so we can see our Canadian friends. again. Yeah. Me too. As being a Canadian who would really like to go back. And we did have plans for me to go back along with bringing some tour operators in, uh, you know, to help drive distance from further away. But well, well, you know, what is interesting is that many countries can fly into the U.S. at the moment. Uh, can do a little bit of traffic in there. And so, uh, you know, if you're part of that group, we have a wide listenership. Uh, not just Canada and the U.S., of course, uh, Great Britain, uh, you know, Australia, and most of the English-speaking world tunes in to some degree. So it, I, there I are going to be opportunities. I am amazed when I look at the analytics as to the U.K. probably pops up all the time yeah. as right in behind U.S. and Canada. Yeah, that's right. It, those are the top yeah. three always. Yeah. So if you're out in that uh, in a realm where you can travel, and uh, it, it seems to me that we can – we can really get behind what's gone on at Boyne because right away you guys had a strategy. You had a stay strategy for the hotel. Uh, you stuck to it. So, you know, at least there's an endor a seal of endorsement we can put on there that we know Ken and we know that they went about this the right way. That's right. That's absolutely correct. And, and you know, 2020, let's face it, it's a year to forget, Yeah, I think. Yeah. Um, and I think... Ken and his team are ahead of the curve because they're already into preparing and looking towards 2021, and they've got a whole slew of uh, offers that people should be aware of and taking note and action. They're all on the traveling golfer right now, but Ken, why don't you, uh, you want to highlight a few that are... Yeah, where are we going in 2021, Ken? Well, the, the thing is, is 2021 is going to be based on what we learned in 2020. I mean, there's still a lot of questions out there. It's really early. But really, at the end of the day, we have a lot more knowledge right now than we did, say, in earlier mid-May a year ago. So we, we did learn that golf a, across the board is an activity that can be enjoyed with minimal risk uh, in spite of a pandemic and, and obviously the concern. Um, we did establish, we you know, from the start, we basically – followed guidelines that the national golf course owners and the state of Michigan established um, to minimize the for the golfer, you know, or, or just the lodging guests. Um, 
you know, and we did it through the whole season. We got some feedback as the season went on that, hey, why don't you let us pull flags out now? Why don't you put rakes back in the bunkers? Well, we stuck with the things that were working all summer. I mean, we were very fortunate that, that we didn't have a lot of problems. And we think we didn't have a lot of problems because we kept trying to do it the right way all year. So we kept the foam in the cups all year and we didn't put sand on the carts. It, it really stressed um, our ops team because they were the ones that had to take care of fairway divots and we weren't getting any help from our golfers who are usually a big assist. But, um, you know, we put out single T markers instead of dual T markers. It just, we wanted to try and do everything we could to minimize the risk for the golfer and for the staff that we had working. You know, we had additional testing protocols in place for I mean, everybody. Yeah, I working in an office had to follow on the golf course ops team, the lodging, but we had a, a health protocol every morning that we had to do a temperature check. We had to check in at the station. We had to report it. We had to say if we traveled outside of the state at all. Um, all these things, additional cleaning, cleaning protocols in the hotel, all these things just to have a better experience for the guests. Um, as you said, we did open up 2021 uh, because we do know a lot more than we did in the spring. Um, we worked with everybody that did have problems, you know, on the books that, that wanted to come but weren't able to come. We worked with them either to refund or, in most cases, they just went ahead and moved it into 2021. But for those that didn't, uh, we opened up 2021 to booking um, in late September, right after the U.S. Open. And, and so far, the bookings are way ahead of pace of even where they were a year ago. I do think that there is a uh, there's a lot that we, we did learn. Uh, we are all doing it different, even in the studio here. So to be able to apply that knowledge for the sake of efficiency and enjoyment doesn't seem like a huge pivot anymore. The big pivot was, oh, my God, we got to put cups in and take sand away and you know, all of these other measures. Now you can actually refine those measures into something that's manageable and I think better for everybody a way better handle going in on, I mean, we know things work, um, you know, not everything works the way it used to, but yeah. we've got a plan in place that actually works and allow you to play golf and get out and enjoy, um, you know, time with friends and family. And, oh, and let's great. face it these days, or this has been a year to take advantage of doing anything that you could with friends, family, or whomever. Um, and being in the great outdoors just, makes it that much better i'll share a quick side story with you guys shout out to uh kelly fanson who uh by the way she has her own podcast it's called uh, still a hot mess it's very funny she's a, a wonderful actress she has spent her summer with her two grown sons and her boyfriend traveling around ontario improving their golf game and, and entertaining us endlessly on their instagram with their enjoyment uh their new discovered foursome on the golf course that makes them have such joy uh, so I think a lot of that happened. I think the family golf scenario really opened up. I sense a dueling podcast based out of Boyne, Michigan next year. Oh yeah. You know what? They would, they'd be up for the challenge. That's for sure. I've watched their golf. They're, they're getting very good. Well done, Kelly. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, but I let's... think that there is a lot of that now and, uh, to roll up with the kids who are bored out of their minds, uh, teenage or not get the device out of their hands and, uh, have some actual interaction that happened on the golf course a lot in 2020 and 2021. We're now planning to do that. Yes. And in the U.S., I think uh, I'm, I'm just going to throw this out there because I think we owe a lot of the new golfers coming into this uh, to somebody like Top Golf yep. because, you know, now they probably can't go into Top Golf like they used to, but they're, they've taken that experience and they're saying, okay, well, let's try it for real. And, exactly. And I think, you know what, I, anybody who's half an athlete at all will take to this game because it's the most humbling game in the world. Why can't I hit that ball that's not moving? Yeah, I was able to knock out my opponent in the MMA ring, but I can't sink this putt. What? <laughs> we, we certainly saw it, you know, on our courses. Our, our, our uh, you know, PGA instructors were busier than they have ever been. Uh, with bookings, our, our club fitting service out of the gears, Claudio, that you've seen, they were booked all season long. And it, families, our junior golf numbers, those 17 and under playing our courses, doubled 
And that was without some of the camps that we've always had in the past specifically well, for that. For that, right, yeah. And um, our, our camps, instead of uh, six or seven Nike junior camps that we typically do through the course of the summer, we went to day camps, week-long day camps, three times a, three times uh, per week over the course of the summer. So, I mean, it was locals or people in the area, but our junior numbers doubled, our family numbers, as you said, getting out in the evenings and playing with the entire family. Um, in the evenings, our courses were busier than they've ever been. People were working remotely, and then they were getting out on a golf course at 4 o'clock, 5 o'clock, and, and playing, you know, as you know, Claudio, till 9 or 10. Well, that concerns me a bit, Ken, especially for your game, because uh, knowing how much you like to play, were you able to squeeze in? It's always that I, I, I really like it when our courses are busy um, in the evenings when I go out. Only personally, it's not quite as efficient for me to play golf as it is when there aren't. So um, I, I find my way around. Have you had to step off the course just for the sake? Okay, look, I'll take a pass. You guys are too busy tonight. Uh, or do you just find yourself uh, squeezing yourself in on somebody else's game? Hey, listen, uh, as long as we're all in our own carts and there's only three of you, you know, that would be, I would be doing that all the time. We could, or I know the shortcuts to just go back around and play a hole or jump ahead and get ahead of them. So, you know. You, oh, that's a good point. Yeah. He has, he has the inside track. Let's talk a little bit. Uh, let's brag a little bit about the courses while we're here. I mean, we've done that before, but it's always uh, good to give uh, a reminder. And by the way, it's, it's what I like to refer to as golf porn. People just love to hear how beautiful a golf course is. Well, there's not just one. There's 10 golf courses. There's three resorts. They're all within a mile or a ten, an hour of each other. Sorry. Um, and uh, the little city of Petoskey, uh, which is absolutely beautiful right on Lake Michigan, is right there. And Ken, do you have a favorite? Like, I don't know if, if it's a fair question or not, but. I think you narrowed it down to three the last time we talked, but, you know. Well, now I'm at four. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't get better at this, but um, I would say at Boyne Highlands, it's the Heather um, and the Arthur Hills course, two dramatically different courses. The, the Heather was the 2019 uh, National Golf Course Owners of Course of the Year here in the United States. Um, Robert Trent Jones Sr. course and the one that started it all for us in the mid-60s. And then the Arthur Hills course is one of the more recent. Um, the Heather's very traditional. The Arthur Hills is wide open fairways, um, beautiful views. The, the uh, cart path alone on the Arthur Hills is nine miles long. So wow. uh, we have a lot of resorts. You know, we have 10,000 acres between the three properties. So we have plenty of room for social distancing and safe. Um, at Bay Harbor, our most popular track is Lynx Quarry, but my favorite track is actually uh, Preserve Lynx. So there's three Arthur Hills nines there that you combo up, but the Preserve Lynx is my favorite. And then down at Boyne Mountain, it's um, the Alpine. Yes, and the setting, the setting for the Inn at Bay Harbor, uh, which is an autograph collection hotel, is just like to die for it. Like when I moved in for a night or two, I could have stayed forever. Interesting. It would have been easy. Well, you know, it's so funny because when we do talk about this off off the show, you often talk about how uh, how beautiful just the area is. And, of course, for us, it's very accessible. Um, what is it about – and I remember the last time we talked as well, you had some favorite places to eat around town. Ken, let's talk a little bit about that. I mean, social distancing put us out on patios and stuff a lot this summer. Uh, looking ahead, I would imagine it could be similar next summer. Uh, what were some of the places you found yourself sitting out and enjoying this summer? Well, the, the um, as Claudio said, the Inner Bay Harbor is pretty tough to beat because the outdoor dining there, you're about 100, 100 feet off of Lake Michigan. Uh, some of the closest outdoor dining you can get in about a 25-mile stretch of Lakeshore. Um, uh, down in town, one of the places that's become really popular is called the Back Lot. So it's a food lot. There are about eight food trucks on this lot oh, with wow. a beer garden beside it with the roll-up garage doors. Um, so it's extremely popular. A lot of the restaurants downtown actually bought parking spaces and put fence around them to enhance their outdoor dining experience right in the downtown area. And, you know, we're fortunate, um, you know, we have Petoskey that sits in the middle, but right up five miles from Boyne Highlands, you've got Harbor Springs area. 
Um, Boyne Mountain, seven miles away, is uh, Boyne City. Um, and there's a bike trail that does a lot of interconnect from Bay Harbor clear up to Harbor Springs. But even at Boyne Mountain, they put in a seven mile bike path straight into the city so that whether you want to pedal and have some work or even we have electric bikes that we rent at all three properties. So you could get on an electric bike, ride to town in 15 minutes and have your choice of dining experiences and not necessarily be driving. Okay, so well, well, don't forget about the Highlands. Uh, come on, that, you've got a great pub down there. That yeah, the, the food. Highlands, you've got a number of. You've got the Slopeside Restaurant there. You've got the Country Club of Boyne that looks right out over the golf courses, um, of Boyne Highlands. Um, a wide variety, and you know, as much as we love you to eat at our properties, and, and we've got plenty of experience, as Claudio said, that the, these communities um we have 14 wineries that sit amongst our three properties well, that's why you didn't out. want to leave claudio See, 10 yeah, courses like 14 wineries <laughs> yeah a couple distilleries a couple micro breweries but 14 wineries that sit here too now so um you know and we're only 45 uh actually it's less than 45 minutes from boyne highlands up to Mackinac Island, which was a couple of years ago, was TripAdvisor's number one yes. tourist attraction in the U.S. So you've got history. Uh, Hemingway spent a lot of time here um, in his 20s, so there's a few watering holes that he has frequented. Um, there's even a Hemingway tour. So this a lot of variety. Everybody doesn't want to play 36 holes a day anymore. Now it's, can I play 18 or 27, and what else can I do? Yeah. And there's experiences. Oh, that's amazing. That's me. And you get your, on the golf packages, uh, you get the golfers off uh, nice and healthy with the absolutely ama amazing buffet breakfast uh, that's available that I, I don't think you can discount when you actually no. walk in for the first time and you go, oh my God, this is breakfast? Yeah, that that is a big deal. That can, you know, this is going to sound silly, but uh, nine holes before you eat something first thing in the morning that can ruin your first nine holes, man. Like it, if you're not juiced up and ready to go, uh, it can it can affect your game. Plus, who doesn't love a good buffet breakfast? It's, it's not necessary to play before breakfast. It, no, you're right. I understand. I understand because you were at the wineries <laughs> before. And I get it. We have different schedules. I understand. But uh, it is nice to have so much variety. And as you say, stay, play, and experience uh, all in one place. I didn't know that about Hemingway, but that is uh, that is a really wonderful vacation uh, picture that you've painted for us here. Yes, yes. And Ken, if I had one course that I needed to play again, because we started too early and the weather wasn't the greatest, but Crooked, crooked Tree? Right. Crooked Tree. It, it sticks in my mind as one that I need to play again. Oh, okay. Even What'd you I'm, like about it? I. You did well. Um, I don't know if I did well. I, I don't remember if I did well, but it sticks out in my mind as, you know, there was ravines and there was some blind shots and there was lots of ups and downs as far as terrain change. So elevation change. So very cool. It just kind of sticks out in my mind. Where can we find out more about uh, these courses? What's offered uh, in Boyne and uh, get some people uh, planning for next year. The, um, well, real quick, to back to Claudio, your crooked tree is a tale of two nines, Claudio. You've kind of got a parkland course on the front nine, and then you have lake views on the back nine. Oh. Yes, yeah, I do recall that. Now. Yeah, very yes. nice. You, yes. So uh, you kind of get both. So, that, that's um, a nice experience. It was. Yeah. It was It was fantastic. And then we weren't done yet. I don't I think then we went to Bay Harbor and played another 18 that afternoon. You guys did 36 holes golfing together in a day? We did. He tried to kill me. I wow. told you that the first time. Maybe you could play three rounds the next time I bring him. But he saved the he saved the best for last. The the And guess what? The sun came out. We were right uh, on the shoreline of Lake Michigan, and I got some pretty damn good pictures. Very nice. Which made it all I've worthwhile. Seen, I've seen those. I've seen some of those shots posted. Yeah, they look very nice. It is a beautiful area. From everything you've posted on Traveling Golfer, it really does look lovely. Yes, and they can find out more on the Traveling Golfer. But I think to really have a complete picture, boingolf.com. Boingolf.com. Is that okay. right, Ken? Yeah. Um, one of the big things that 
that we think was important, you know, we talked early in the show about the success that we had and how we had a good plan. We think one of the things we did um, was to be very transparent and upfront as far as all these changes that were going to go in place. And this is something you can find it still lives today, even though the courses are closed uh, as far as planning for next year. Um, and we'll, we continue to keep it updated all summer. But we had an FAQ page or a what to expect page, and it grew from a few basic questions um, to, a, to over 25 questions to talk about lodging. Uh, what happens when you arrive for lodging? What happens when you arrive to display 18? Uh, what protocols do we have in place? What social distancing practices? And a lot of the operating procedures we talked about earlier, because we don't want you to come here wondering what it's gonna be like as much as we can. Um, we wanna let everybody know what it's gonna be like and what we typically do to make it a better experience for our guests and, and so there Smart. are any questions Smart. whenever you go to the call. You know, you know what, your, your reluctance to do something uh, often is, uh, is removed when you have knowledge about it. Once you know what's going on and what the scenario is, it does take the fear out of that uh, entirely. So that was a smart idea. Yeah, and you know, for us, the um, we have you know, stay and play packages available. We have unlimited golf packages available for the, those that want to play 36 or 54 a day if they want to. Uh, you know, we have a great escape package. It's an unbelievable deal. Um, that's just a little over a thousand dollars, and you come in on Sunday night and you stay through Friday. You have unlimited golf on seven of our 10 courses. You get a round of your choice at uh, one of the Bay Harbor courses. And it includes breakfast and dinner every day. Um, That's awesome. So it's, it's that unlo- buffet so, breakfast I was telling you about. Yeah. yeah. So I do you love want. a buffet breakfast, man. That could have got me. If you guys started with that, I would have booked a trip right then. Go for it. That should always be your lead. We've got buffet breakfast. They're booking for 2021 right now. All right, so everybody, get yourself lined up. Get informed. Travelinggolfer.net or boingolf.com. Boingolf. Okay. Ken, thanks a lot, man. Will you come back on uh, when we get closer to the reopen and we'll see where we're at? Oh, for sure, Mike. Claudio, really appreciate it. And uh, it's always great to talk to you guys and, and look forward to having you over again. You bet. I can't wait. All right, we'll leave you to go shovel some snow, and we'll catch up with you soon. Take care, guys. Thanks. Have a good one, Ken. Well, Boyne, Michigan, every time I think about it, it's so accessible for you and I, right? It is frustrating that we can't get there right now. That was so frustrating. And I really do want to go. But I am looking forward to 2021 uh, because I do believe by then we'll be able to make some access to certain places at, at the very least. Um, who knows? We might even have a vaccine by then. It's tough to say. But oh it God. is definitely on my travel list uh, almost right away. Yeah. Well, there's a ton of places on my travel list right away. As Boyne, you can imagine for Bo- somebody who spends half of their time on the road. I can imagine, yeah. This has been very difficult for you. Yes. Uh, and, of course, for the uh, golf travel industry overall because we've had to localize it a little bit. The good news about Boeing is if you're within you know, a few hours' drive, it's a world away. From many, uh, many of the cities nearby. It's just a couple of hours north of Detroit. So yeah. figure out how long it takes you to get to Detroit and then just go north. How long does it take Young us man. to get there from Toronto? Seven or eight hours. Not that's, bad, man. Yeah, just as Ken said, it just depends on how fast you drive. And my theory is that I don't follow anybody who ain't worth following. Good point. So, yeah. <laughs> seven. So, yeah. <laughs> seven. Six and a half. Depends on how much coffee you've had. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. That helps too. Uh, all right. Uh, speaking of a beverage, uh, maybe you're going to pull up a, uh, a nice glass of wine or a spirit uh, in your plans over the next couple of weeks. Well, maybe we can offer you some insight. What do you have in the wine cellar for us this week, Claudio? Well, you know, without traveling, I have had a lot of time to spend in the wine cellar. So and as I was like thinking about what we could talk about, I realized that we really have not or I have not even touched on any Merlot. Well, that's a good point. Shame on me. Shame on you, uh, but we we can let you off the hook with a little bit of Merlot talk right now. I have rectified that recently um, just because. And I went to one of my favorites, J. Lore. I always love their wines. Um, And dug up a uh, nice, it's a J. Lore Asos Merlot. It's about $23, so it's reasonably priced. 
but very rich for that $23 as, as far as taste goes. It's got a little bit of a smoky, dark fruit, but very smooth and I would be like a crowd pleaser. Yeah, what, what, what would you serve with it? This sounds like a nice beefy wine. Um, I'm not going to say beef because... Too obvious. The last one has got the real ah, okay, beef, okay, okay. but you know anything red, any kind of red meat or yeah. pork or anything like that, pasta, lamb, I mean, maybe a bit of pasta, lamb, yeah. Oh, yeah. lamb, yeah. I love lamb. Yeah. But you know, I found that you can have any kind of wine with anything you like, anytime you want, and you don't have to justify it to anybody. No, sometimes there's good pairings, you know, but that's not yes. that's not a necessity. No, no, absolutely, because you can go. So our next one is a an Italian Massi Modelo and it's a couple of bucks more 25 bucks hmm. um, but it's lighter it's lighter in color it's a little fresher it's it's more food friendly to anything and uh, it's kind of it's kind of uh, dry but medium and uh, it's still got the red fruit flavors that you find in most red wines that's why they're red what's the price point on that 24.50 is actually Canadian dollars. That's good. Oh, so in, in the U.S., you just pay for Almost the bottle. Free. Yeah. Um, and uh, so that's still in the reasonable realm uh, for a very good wine. Yep. Yeah. Yep. For yep. sure. And then, I guess saving the best for last, we have Raymond. I owe Raymond for a lot of good memories way back in the day. So... Here's to you, Raymond. Uh, Raymond. Hope you're doing well. Raymond, Raymond's been good to me. Um, this one's almost 40 bucks, 38.95, and it is a little bit of a blend of Cab uh, and Petit Verdot wine or mm. grape. Okay. Um, so it's a little bit of a blend, but this is really heavy duty, chocolatey and plummy, and much darker. Wow. It's, it's a gold medal winner in this by the San Francisco Chronicle in 2019 so it has to be really good but no it was it was delicious and is it easy to get um well it's available in Ontario right now LCBO for 40 or 39 dollars yeah um very very good and yeah this is this is screams out where's the beef nice yes all right, so well, there, there you go. go. Now, that, now you know why I didn't use beef the first time around. Yeah, a little. Oh, now I'm, uh, I can even smell the Bernays on the side. Oh, well, these seems like uh, yeah. seems like you've done your homework on these ones. Uh, and and also, by the way, uh, I'm going to recommend you follow the traveling golfer on Insta because the yeah. stories. Uh, what is your uh, Insta handle again? Traveling golfer twenty three. And uh, it's a good follow because if you think you're having a good time, and then you go to uh, uh, Claudio's. A feed and often in the stories you'll be like i wish i was at his place right now he just cooked this and and there's this amazing wine being served so you can see some of this that he's talking about right there on the uh, social media side of things as well yes traveling golfer 23 it's fun visit travelinggolfer.net. don't forget to subscribe to this show right here uh, wherever you're listening to it thanks for joining us we'll catch yes. you next time and all the wine recommendations are there under wine and spirits so enjoy Thanks, buddy. We'll catch you next time. Yep. Yeah.